I love to flick the twangy bit. I bet you do. You can flick my twangy bit any day. <laughs> Welcome to episode 8 of the Wrong Kind of Music podcast. Uh, today we are going to be reviewing Heat 5 of Metal to the Masses, uh, and then we're going to be previewing Heat 6 of Metal to the Masses, which will round up all of the initial heats. Um, today we've got <coughs> Liam back, um, as always. Uh, myself, obviously, again. And today we've got Claire for the first time. Hi. Um, just like myself, Claire's just a punter, goes to gigs, enjoys metal. And likes having opinions on shit. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get stuck in then. Um, first band of the night was Winteriness. Winteriness are a two-piece metal band. Uh, I, I get um, black and death metal vibes from them um, with a, a little bit of power metal and a little bit of folk metal. Um, we talked about them on the last podcast. Uh, one of the things we talked about was would they turn up with a full band or would it be um, a strong backing track with with guitars uh, and we'll find out on the night that's exactly what it was um, Shane on guitar Jordy on guitar and then the bass drums and sort of like electronic elements of it um, we're, all, we're all on a backing track Liam what do you make of it? There's talent there like you can't argue the boys can play and the songs are good but the fact that it was just the two of them it was really awkward you know they they're not the most enigmatic guys on stage you know stick them in you know hooded gowns and stuff and, and all that there and yes you know they, they're great but just the two of them up there they didn't seem to know how to react uh, and yeah. it just felt uh there's no presence it just it was there, there was it's hard to watch at times. There was parts of it where you got like some really, really good drumming coming in. Yeah. And when that happens, my eyes immediately dart to the drums. And, and there's nobody there. And, and there's no one there. I think they sounded brilliant. Sounded really, really good. I've seen people use the backing track before and it gets lost or it's badly yeah. EQ'd or whatever. Um, I thought all that was fine. That was presented fine. Um... It sounded brilliant. The songs are there. The Yo, songs definitely. are definitely there. But um, for me, at a bottle of the band's competition, you, you can't. You, you can't need a band. Bring, you need a band. I yeah. mean, you can what tell you? this is like um, a passion project for Jordy. Yeah. He has put a hell of a lot of work into this, and it sounds fantastic. It yeah. really does. I can't wait for the album launch, and. I hope that he can fill it out. I hope he can get people in to do the drums and the keyboards and stuff because I think a full band stayed, like set up for that, it's going to be unreal. There's been a big gap, I think, in this year's competition. There's not as much of the black and the death metal. And stuff. The only, they're the only option, I think. Yeah, and it was good that there was some of that there. <clears throat> it's just, it's a battle of the bands competition and you can't turn up without half the yeah, band. Yeah, that's it. And I have to say, I didn't think Geordie's vocals worked live. No. No. That's uh, surprisingly. It uh, just uh, like on the on the recorded stuff, they uh-huh. seem to work, but I don't know. It just he just didn't seem to have the right range. He was kind of somewhere in the middle of where he needed to be, and it just for me didn't didn't okay. work. Um, yeah, as as you say, I think if you fleshed out the band and you got the drums and you got a bass player and especially the keys, because I think that would yeah. Oh, they need a they need a keyboard player. That that would make them stand out from everything else. The other thing we were saying about was. There's some people I speak to and they talk about the Belfast scene and how so many bands are unique and different compared to everyone else. Yeah. Like, you know, there's no other bands that sound like Scimitar. No. There's no other bands that sound like Vanny Means. And there's no other bands that sound like pff, For Toxic Elder Dread. Yeah. Everyone kind of slots into a little a little gap within the music scene, I think. Yeah. And I think there's a gaping big hole right there for a band like Winterness. I, I don't Definitely. think anyone else in Belfast is playing music like that and that's one of the reasons I'd love to see them get the whole band going because I yeah. think they would just slot in there brilliantly. Yeah, it's, it's something we need. I think, um, yeah, next year there could be, you know, if they get the band and they like set all in and stuff. Some gigs under their belt. Yeah, yeah they could they could be serious contenders. Yeah, I think you're right as well if they commit and if they get the hoods and stuff and they just completely commit yeah. to the whole image and stuff it's unless they get real. like unless they get an actual front man in see you know they're not going to be the kind of band that engages a crowd and if but, you're gonna if you're gonna mm. be if you're gonna be like that 
you've got to have some kind of big visuals and I think you'll just oh, the, yeah, the clouds and stuff and if you're, you're, if you're going for that look then that works and you don't have to really engage the crowd. There's, there's something that kept popping <clears> into my head whenever I was watching them in terms of having them fleshed out and, and adding more to it is to me you could theme them in the same way that Shrouded kind of had that yeah. theme with the, the shrouds and all that. Um, there's a band called X Dio. I don't know if you know them, the right? Is well. But they dress up like almost like gladiators and stuff. Now I think it's shit. Yeah. I think the band's shit. I know lots of people love them. <laughs> but it's something like that, except oh. not shit. I think it'd be brilliant. Well, so you got like bands like uh, Valperga as well. Oh, they, 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 they do the image yeah, thing brilliantly. The image thing, and you know. But then again, to be fair, Ruby was like a completely captivating front one. Yeah. Intimidating as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah, they need something. If they're not going to be engaging, they need some kind of visual aspect that'll uh, that'll negate that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Next up on the night was uh, Cloakroom Q. We spoke about Cloakroom Q last time. But they, I, I, I don't know what they are. Um, <laughs> and now that I've seen them live, I don't care what they are. Yeah. Uh, Claire, what did you reckon? Um, I liked one of the guys' makeup, but that was cool. The way he had the faces and stuff, and it was like bass player, wasn't it? I think. I think so. And it was like it actually messed in my head at first. It was like, okay, what's going on? And then it started, and uh, I just that seemed to be. Uh, I mean, the, yeah, good reaction. They didn't even them. seem to bring the craziness that was kind of promised. A lot of it was very sedate. It Is was. that you know the right and the, the lead singer just sort of was leaning on the microphone. The sunglasses and wasn't really engaging very much and no. I found the set it started to get quite repetitive. Yeah. Even though the songs maybe sounded slightly different, there was sort of same sort of beat kind of going through all the songs and it just didn't appeal to me the, uh, at all. Maybe I'd made my mind up before I'd seen them. Um, that's potentially the case. But whenever they went on stage and there was the guy with the keyboard setting it up on two little bar studs. I'm sitting going, come on the fuck. Like, yeah, really? Buy a fucking stand, like. Yeah. It, it, it just, everything about it just seemed, I think the, the word I used on the <clears> night was try hard. Yeah. Um, there was, there was points as well, and I've seen loads of like indie rock bands do this. Bits where the song build up a bit, right? And then the drums kick in and it goes, like, the, the song starts going a wee bit, but the whole band goes spastic. Yeah. Like they're playing Slipknot or something, but yeah. they're not. And I'm standing there going, why is it all going nuts? Because this music isn't... Because yeah. there's nothing there. I don't know what you're reacting to to go that mad on stage. Because it's just... The only aggression that I was feeling was coming from the drums. Yeah, oh, he and was And the rest nuts. of it was just... Nah, See, the, they started out and I thought... Because you know, the first song I thought, actually, yes. I, I got into it. It had like a post-rock vibe. Uh, there's a band I really like called Coma Recovery. And they do that big instrumental epic thing. And it kind of hinted at that. And... You know, it seemed like, right, we could be getting something a bit different here. Then the next song comes on and you're like, oh, fuck. It was that horrible talking heads kind of. Yeah. And I, like, I love talking heads. Yeah. But it's like they'd listened to early Faith No More, like the first couple albums, but come at it from an indie direction instead of the, the kind of rock or metal direction. Yeah. And it, it was just... I think oh, kind horrible. of what they're aiming for is, I think they were, I think I said to you the night, I can see what they're doing in their minds, they could be playing something like um, Big Town in like one of the forest events, the psychedelic, where you've got all the crazy lights yeah. and stuff. <clears throat> but at the same time, it's just, it, they're not even hitting that. It was a bit scaled back. Yeah. If they're what they're presenting and what they're doing, if they completely committed to it and actually just went, fuck it, we are going off the rails. We yeah. are just we are, we, we're going, oh, I don't know where we're going, we're just going to try it. Yeah. But it's, the yeah. fact that they just didn't commit to it made it all a bit boring. Yeah, and they'd, yeah. they'd been all over their social media going, you know, oh, we're not a metal band, but we're going to win this metal competition. I, and, or and we're, we, we were, we're going to bring the funky, funky jams. jams and and I, I don't know. Wasn't funky I, jams. I, there was comments there, and I wasn't too sure if they were in response to what we had said on the previous podcast, but the, there was things even on their social media that just, just rubbed me the wrong yeah. way. They redone the poster. Now, I don't know if you've seen the posters for all the Metal to the Masses. Like, right across the UK, it is the same yes. template used with the band names put in certain ways and it's mm-hmm. all presented in a very professional and slick manner. Yeah. They've done their own poster for the gig. Now, I don't know who the fuck thinks that's okay to do. 
to, to yeah. do it a poster. It was a mess. For a promoter's gig. That's what the fuck? Yeah, um, there's no. There's and it no was way. a shambles. I'll, I'll stick a copy of it up on the screen here in front of Liam's lovely face. I just. It's like, what are you doing? And then, I mean, every band tries to bring a crowd down. Yeah, oh, they to, did have the biggest crowd, no doubt. To say their crowd stood out <clears throat> from everyone else in that room is yeah. an understatement. And one of the things I was going to say, like, maybe it's coming across as, like, all the metalheads pointing at the non-metalheads going, eh, look at them. But that fucking happens whenever Apparently it a metal band the other way Apparently, I was chatting to someone last night who was standing back, and when Cursed Sun and stuff were on, the, like, they had, Q fans were mocking people. Uh, oh, yeah, they were, they were dancing. You saw people dancing, they were pretending to be, oh, look at us, we're fucking being uh-huh. metalheads. It's like... <sighs> but when, when, yeah. a met, when a metal band goes and joins... Um, another band competition like the one for Slum Flower Fest I, I know for a fact that there's been up in kind of you know snide remarks and yeah. eh, look at the weirdos and stuff like that so if, if it happens in the flip way then why the fuck way shouldn't we do that yeah, I mean um, the thing is this is for the metal bands this is a huge opportunity and it's the only one that really exists yeah and there are so many bands that put so much time and so much effort I mean like when you spoke like Andy and the crawling basically took six months out and focused purely on that competition because they knew what it meant. Yeah. And bands like that, and then they just turn up and it's like they're mocking it and it's disrespectful. Uh-huh. It's I mean, if, if, oh this 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 could make or break a band's career. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you go in and you bring all your mates down and put a band out or what it because it's not even the winners. It's the bands that make it to the final. You get to perform the Simon Hall. Yeah. Because it's happened many a time where a band may not win, but they'll get booked maybe a year later or whatever. Yeah. It's getting them on the radar. And if you're deliberately kind of coming in... Just for the Just crack. pissing all over it. Yeah. It's just... I, it, it, it rubs me the wrong way, and I think it's disrespectful. And... Fuck them. So, <laughs> Fuck off. Something, <laughs> yeah. so, something tells me we won't see them again anyway, so... Um. Oh, I could see them being the kind of band that will keep entering just started. I'd, I'd like to spite. think. I'd like to think that there'd be some sort of quality control that would prevent that from happening. But, but as um, we've said many a times, it's not our competition. It's not our rules. It's we're not promoting it. It's, we just we just talk about it after. I the think fact. it's clear from the fact the bands in that heat and the upcoming heat. Uh, there was a there you, there was a certainly a certain amount of metal bands entered, and because you would like to have thought that if there were more genuine metal bands more bloodstock type bands they would have got through so, I mean I don't think James has like ruled <clears throat> any band out or anything because I don't yeah. think he takes that upon himself and I think I think he's right you know it's not down to him to turn around and go no I'm not putting you in he's well, the yeah. promoter and if a band applies they'll play if that, if that was the case if you had to submit your band to the promoter of whatever metal to the masses it was yeah. and they had a sort of a okay I've got Benchmark. this many bands and I'm going to knock these ones. In a way, that that would then be heat one. Yeah. Because you would have to get past yeah. that. But this this I don't think the spirit of the competition is like that. The yeah. spirit of the competition is that it's about the judges and the people paying in to vote. Yeah. So, and see, I, as long one. as you take it serious. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's it. You know, there are bands mm-hmm. in the competition that aren't metal bands and stuff, but they come down and you can tell they're, they're respected. They're there to work. Yeah. They're there, they know they're not going to win. But they're still putting the effort in, mm-hmm. and because, like you said, they, they see that it's an opportunity. Even yeah. even Neil, you don't have to get to the final for Simon Hall. They hear you. I reckon he probably is the kind of guy that's checking out every band in every heat. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> because you know, he seems to be sort of boy. You know, he would he would look at it and go right. I'll give each band a, a listen here just in case because he's bound to I, I, like, I I would think I would think the opposite. I would think that I mean, there's what twenty. Four bands in the Belfast competition. Yeah, there's like twenty odd finals, isn't there? Right, and then how many bands That's are there yeah. across? You must be talking three or four hundred bands in total. There's no way he's gonna sit down and listen to all this. I don't know. I, I reckon he would maybe take the approach of going to the, the promoter of each event and kind of saying, "Were there any bands that didn't make it through to the final that you kind of thought f- yeah. really should have?" And then he'll maybe pick through those. But again. That's just speculation. We, yeah. don't, we don't really know. I'll well, tell you what, if Simon's watching this or any, anybody that knows him's watching this, find out for us. I'm <laughs> sure Simon's got better things to do than watch us fucking talk shit about bands. <laughs> right, so um, that's enough of Cloaker and Q, I think. More um, than enough. Fingers crossed. We'll never have to talk about them again. Um, next up in the night were um, 
Victim Royal. Victim Royal. I keep calling them Victim Royal. So does everyone else. But and I've started there. talking to people, and I don't know if it's because of listening to us. Loads of people are calling them Victim Royal. I actually said to one of the guys in the band, "You guys need to change your name to Victim Royal <laughs> <laughs> with cheese." Yeah. Um, Claire, what do you reckon? Um, went in. I had no expectations because I hadn't even listened to the stuff that was online. I didn't even know really what kind of they were gonna be turn up and playing and. Um, and I actually, I, I enjoyed it. I was quite impressed. I think the drummer was just, I mean, I think that's actually been a factor of the competition. There's been a really high standard of drummers. I even made TV any sticks left at the end of the set because they kept snapping in half and flying and mm. one landed up the feet and... I wasn't as impressed with the drummer. No. Oh. No, I thought he didn't have an awful lot of flow to him. He now, was very clunky at times. Now you drum. Yeah, yes. well, I used to a long time ago. And I really like the drummer, so I'm wondering. It was sometimes I get something from a drummer in a visual sense. Oh yeah, no, he you was, could you tell know, he was having a blast. Oh yeah, oh, yeah he was having a blast, and he was, he was giving just, it. He was yeah. giving it stacks. Like there's no argument there. But I don't know. He just he was he was for me the whole band as well. At times were quite clunky. Their guitar harmonies didn't quite match up at times. Mm-hmm. Um, they were a bit stop starty. Um, I, I, I thought as we watched them right at the start of it um, for about the first I think it was the first three songs for me anyway metal needs to be down here metal's dirty and nasty yeah. and filthy and aggressive <laughs> and their tones and their melodies were all up here and it was kind of like I can tell that this this they're all very good at what they do oh, yeah, yeah. but I just I drop it an octave or two or even three you know? yeah. um, and that's that's what I kind of felt for about the first three songs <clears throat> then they played Smoke Break right which I love I think that song's great I really really do um, and at that point it all just seemed to come together for me it did come down a, a, a touch um, it started to feel a bit heavier they started to get into the songs a bit more yeah. and I thought from that point on if I'd only seen the three songs I'd have walked away going nah not really impressed but the latter half of the set, I actually thought was really, really good, and I really enjoyed it. I think you can tell they are, they're a new band, and they're still developing their sound. They're still trying yeah. to figure it out, and there is some of the stuff that was a bit weaker. But then there is stuff I'm <coughs> getting, I'm presuming it's the newer stuff, and whenever it, it, they're getting there, they're getting the sound. And it is, I mean, they're playing, it's like the New Blood stage. Yeah. They, they represent the spirit of the competition to me. They're a young band that are coming in, I didn't really know them. I hope they're going to get a couple more bickens off the back of this. I'd I like to see them easily. And do you know what also I really enjoyed? Those guys were having the time of their lives. Oh, you could tell they were They were them. enjoying, they were, all the bands, when Ten Ton Slug were on, they were going batshit. And yes. that's it, you know, that's, we, we talk about the scene and stuff. They didn't just turn up and play their set and fuck off. They were down and... They were having fun. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that any expectations are going through. I don't think that was kind of maybe they were there to have fun and enjoy themselves and they did. And one one of the things about you you saying about them looking like they were enjoying themselves, the, the front guy who was playing good playing bass, bass yeah. uh, and singing. He seemed to have a smile on his face. Yes. The yeah. entire, My face hurt the more. entire set. And I was wondering is he is he really that happy the whole time, <laughs> or is worrying. or has he got something that's like the opposite of rest and bitch face, <laughs> <laughs> or if he just relaxes his face, it falls into a smile. I don't know. He just seemed to be loving it, and I've said this before: if a band look like they're enjoying yeah. themselves, it's half the battle. I tend to start enjoying it too. Yeah. I get a real. I it's think infectious. I think positivity can be infectious, and when a band are just up there having a good time, crowds will have a good time. Um, as I say, a couple of my notes I have here. I thought at the start they sounded, considering there was five of them, it sounded a wee bit underpowered. I do think they need to, they do, they need to bring a bit more crunch into their sound, or a bit more power, or a bit more aggression. I think there's, there's just something a wee bit lacking there. But overall, I, I enjoyed them. No, it wasn't, wasn't my bag at all. No, like no, I, no. I thought they were, you know, it's, it's that bullet from my Valentine kind of trivium uh-huh. sound that they have, and as, as much as I love. Sort of how Trivium used to be. I just thought it just didn't really do it for me. And the thing that still sticks in my throat is they say on their Facebook page that they're a, a sharp shock to tired metal blueprints. Yeah. Um, I, I, but I, if I, you're I, coming in ripping off. Of, oh. <coughs> what do you mean? If you're coming in ripping off for my Valentine, you're not a sharp shock to mm. anything. 
You know, I get what you mean. I, th- I think hyperbole like that can put, set people off in the wrong foot. Yeah, it's all right being confident and knowing right, look, we, you know, we're out here to kick some ass and blah, 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 but kind of have to know where you're where you're actually pitching yourself. There, there's, there's one band in particular that used to do that a lot. They used to come out with things that yeah. they were going to go down and destroy Voodoo and blow the roof off the place and stuff like that. And it always... They ended up getting known as the band who kept saying those things. I think they learned to tuck it down. And then bit, comments being made of it, Voodoo's still saying them. <laughs> um, yep, one last week thing I'll say about Victim Royale. Um, after s- <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Change it to Victim Royale, you just yeah. have to. No. I'm going to call them Victim no. Royale. Um, one, wee like, <laughs> one wee thing I'll say about Victim Royal, they done something similar to Sky Pilot in that they've obviously seen the podcast <laughs> and had a wee bit of banter with us. Which we, we appreciate. We told them last time, whatever you do, do not play the ballad. And just as they were about to play the last song, one of the guitarists said... Um, this is our acoustic number. Th- this because is our acoustic last song. Ballad, yeah, it's it's our little like, acoustic ballad and pointed over at me and it was just like... And then obviously they went into one of their heavier songs. I was sort of down by the merch table uh-huh. um, and the uh, singer from Ten Ton Slug was like, he just say ballad. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> wee bits of banter and crack like that. Yeah. We appreciate it. So um, cheers for that. Uh, that kind of wraps up. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Apologies. How did I forget about the old Lee Cursed Son? And uh, Ten Ton Slug. Well, we don't really need to talk about Ten Ton Slug, but we will. <laughs> um, Cursed Son, last band of the night. Um, and I think, and I know it's all done at random. But the fact that Cursed Son went on last was gracious for everyone else involved. Yes. Those guys have honed their trade really well over the past 10 years. And it's really starting to show. Um, as I've said before, the last two EPs, absolutely fantastic. They played a new song called <laughs> MDK, Murder, Death, Kill. Um, I don't know if it's based on Demolition Man. You would have thought so. Um, no one there. There's no, video, there's no video game called MDK, so it might yeah. be on that. I digress. Um thought they were absolutely brilliant. Uh, Steve has started playing bass with them. I kind of thought initially before I seen them playing with them that that was going to be a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. Definitely not. No. Uh, it just worked so well. I think his, voc- his backing vocals complemented Andy's yeah. really, really well. Yes. Yeah. And, and him and Kieran <clears throat> were, you could tell, him and Kieran were having a laugh together. They were, mm-hmm. they were just sort of like bouncing off each other yeah. and it was funny watching them and yeah, it was yeah. that good energy kind of he brings he definitely brings a new life dimension to them like yeah. um he just yeah, he just seems to slot in because even with with andrew as well he was you know there was interaction there yeah. and he just he just looks the part as well and it's, it's, it hurts to say good things about him oh, no, he he's a hateful person <laughs> yeah he's just he's a horrible whore like but um <laughs> yeah <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, he's only been with the band I think three or four weeks yeah. prior um, to their first gig and stuff. He so looks like he's been there from the start. He does. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, one of the things I'll say about you mentioned his back on vocals. I know what Steve's capable in terms of vocals. Yeah. Um, and he can go really fucking, really, really aggressive. I think if he had. <laughs> Anybody got any party rings? <laughs> Start again. <clears throat> they, they haven't been with the band and Steve and seen them in so many bands. I know that Steve can go like really fucking aggressive with his vocals. Yeah. yeah. I think if he had of, it might have not overshadowed Andy's vocals, but kind of you, you don't want your back and vocals to go, oh holy fuck. Yeah. I've seen bands do it before. Yeah. And it takes away from the front man. I think Steve tempered his back and vocals to sit alongside Andy brilliantly. And to me, that's humble as fuck. Yeah, but it's also because like a, a knowing what the song needs instead yes, of going, absolutely. I can do this, so I will. Yeah. It's yeah. like, well, I can do this, but the song doesn't need it. Now, I'd be re- I'm really, really intrigued to see what their new material is with Steve actually involved in the writing process. Well, that MDK... June, I just assumed because it's, I mean it's heavier than anything I've heard from Kirsten Son, so I just assumed oh I'm that's got Steve sure, all over I'm it. Sure, they played that before. I, I asked them. I was written before Steve joined. Yeah. So so to me, it's almost like they've already gone down a heavier route. Yeah. yeah. And then with Steve on board, whatever he throws into the mix, but Kirsten Son heavier. Oh, it's like if someone says to me Kirsten Son or he's another five track EP, it's on par with the last two. I'd be happy there. That's brilliant. If they can surpass that, I think I think. 
I think you, I think you've got a band that if they don't want it this year, they'll play it. Maybe maybe next year. I think they have um, to. You know, they have to be in with a chance of actually just being like I said, one of those bands that yeah. James says to Simon, look, stick these guys on the Jägermeister stage. Oh that'd god, that stage. Well, well, say, no stage, stage can stage. contain well, Andy. Um, this this, be up this is the Jägermeister stage. stage right here. <laughs> you know. There's a, yeah, and not only was Andy running off into the crowd, Kieran yeah. was chasing after him. Yeah. And you might have seen some food he was after. Might have seen some food. Some food. Some food. Yeah. Oh yeah, grub snaps. Check out Kieran's grub snaps on Facebook. <laughs> Can't believe the pimp and grub snaps on the podcast. You can edit that out. Well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think overall, um, confident, professional, slick. That's it. Uh, look like they're enjoying themselves. Own the stage, like own the whole venue, like they always do. Yeah, yeah, top notch, absolutely top notch. Um, well, do you I was, know I was what? Gonna, I was gonna a printed out set list. I mean, does that sounds really petty? But we've talked about well, you've talked before about being it. professional and stuff. See if your band gets on stage with basically the set list scribbled on the back of napkins, chucked around the stage. You're not you're not setting up the professional. We don't know. Oh, there was like a few of the other bands that I've said. It, it happens. Okay. Loads of bands do. They'll turn yeah. up with the scrolled out set list. Just even just nice neat writing. I was just or I, something just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I was, I was really, just really petty. My old band, I used to like to but, print them out and then I'd have the uh, the venue name and the date at yeah. the top as well, and I tried to keep them and then lost them all. So. <laughs> Pointless. Um. Okay, so the results on the night, the two bands that went through were. Cursed Son and Victim Royal. Well done, you got it right. I did get it right. Victim Royal. Um, <laughs> were they the right bands to go through? Uh, yes. Um, Cursed Son, obviously, because leagues ahead of, of everybody in that heat. Um, Victim Royal, because uh, well, for me, they were just... They were the the best of the, the rest. Like, we... Mm-hmm. I, they're not going to make it out of their semi-final. They're not exactly gushing about them. No, they? but even you know, even though you are, you know, you're they're never making it out of their semi-final. You know, I think we'll cross that bridge when we come there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, they were they were definitely the, the best two. Right, two bands to go through. Definitely, absolutely, the right two bands. The right, shadow doubt. Well, personally, I absolutely <clears> think <throat> it's a disgrace to Cloak Room Crew didn't go through. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, the best band on the net. Yeah, I would tell like you what, there you was what? a lot of I would see like the relief the because there's so many people down. You can tell everyone. It. I was breaking it. I was and serious. James as well, like with the wee comment before. He, what was it he said? He said something about um, it's an unusual one or something. And oh, everyone yeah, just went. <laughs> and then it was. He knows what he's doing. He part, of me, doing. part of me would like to have seen them gone through because they would have been properly schooled. Well, I hope that part you of me has cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I took it out back and shot it, right. um, but you know they were they were schooled that night as well. They were shown don't come in and fuck with the big yeah. boys. Like you know. I, I I think right two bands because cursed cursed son, clearly, clearly the best band that I know. Yeah. Um, head and shoulders. Oh, they're a finalist, um, no doubt. And then, joking aside, you couldn't have put Club Room through. Just you just couldn't. Um, Winterness, as much as I enjoyed them, as yeah. talented as I think they are, they're. They're, they're, not, they're, not a, they're, they're not a work in progress. Yeah. Um, it's at the minute, the name comes across as a conceptual thing that I want to see fleshed out. We've, yeah. we've covered that. So it had to be Victim Royal and Kirsten Son. So congratulations to both those bands for going through. And we'll, well, we'll see you in the semi finals. We take a wee break then. Yeah. 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 So after the results were announced, uh, we got a real fucking treat. Um, Galway band Ten Ton Slug came up to Belfast to play after all the, the guys in the heats. They and slugged us well. Fuck me, they yes, did. Yes, They us. did. Um, if, if you're not familiar with them, it's sludgy, I guess a bit of doom. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's stoner metal. Well, to me, it, it, it's... They take it down slow, but they keep it interesting. Yeah. Right? And to me, that's what a lot of the bands that go slow, it just becomes fucking boring, where it's just yeah. about eight times over the, the space of a year. Yeah. Um, they don't do that. They are fucking... I'm just going to sit and gush, because yeah. they're fucking brilliant. They are so good. Um, There's a reason why them. they filled the tent at the New Blood stage. Yeah. 
They I because they're just phenomenal. Also, probably one of the best bands in yeah. the country. Easily. They they're winners of um, one of the previous Dublin events, um, or sorry, All Ireland events. Uh, well, it's not All Ireland. It's not. Yeah. You're getting let's, political. Let's not get political. Fuck it, they won the event held in Dublin. I can't believe how careful you have to be about these things these days. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Um, I don't really have anything else to say other than that they were absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, they've got two EPs on the likes of uh, iTunes, Spotify, all that goodness. Go and check them out. If, you're, if you've only got five minutes, go and check out Slug Grinder. Uh, it's the first track on one of the EPs. They opened with it, and it's fantastic. They're... I'm, I'm kind of lost for words because they're that good. Unfortunately, it being a school night and yeah. late, they didn't get the crowd they deserved. No. But I don't know, part of me was also kind of... It, I think it then reflects good on how people are viewing the Metal to the Masses thing, where they were able to get such a good crowd on a Thursday night for the bands. Yeah. You know, people did rush off after and stuff. It... The bands and the hates are obviously good enough to get the crowds in. Yeah, well, also it would be nice if they'd stay, but obviously people have work and school. Work. It's a sort of a shocking indictment in our shitty public transport yeah. system that people it's, have to leave and they can't like anywhere, anywhere else in the UK, Manchester, London, Glasgow, Edinburgh. You know, you can stay out all night and you can get buses home, trains home at yeah. like two, three in the morning. Here, if you're not gone by eleven o'clock, you're fucked. Yeah. We will do a full podcast at some stage about Translink and just mouth off Fuck about Translink. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Great band. If you get a chance to see them, yeah. go see them. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, solid blokes as well. Like, get, so get their music. Um, I forgot to pick up a t-shirt, so I'm going to have to go online and buy one of their t-shirts. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> That's the standard all bands enter and Metal Masses should be aiming for. Yeah. Most, yes. Very few are yes. going to get there, yeah. but that's what you aim for. Um, okay, so moving on. Coming up, we have got the next round. It's the last round. It's heat six, and it is. It's got. Brian Ford. I really wish Brian Ford were playing <laughs> because they're probably going to be better than any of the bands on this belt. Brian, I've got notes in front of me. Yeah. Fuck me, I'm not even going to edit that. Fuck it. No. Um, okay, we've got false solution. We've got. Monroe. Monroe. We've got. A city's Surf Neil. Green and A City's Neil, and we're going to talk about each of those bands. In turn, we will start off with um, False Solution for no other reason than the first band that I looked up and listened to. Um, I think if you just don't mind, I'll take the lead on this. Yeah. False Solution are a band that are hard to grasp because their sound changes like the wind. Yeah. Um, I started listening to them, and the first track I listened to was just straight up rock and roll sort of thing. I would say, Go play hard rock hell. That is your jam. Yeah, terrible lyrics in that song. <laughs> I, I picked up on a couple of wee things yeah, and I kind it's, of... It's, it's that like you're you're 13 and you're sitting in your bedroom and you're like, I want to rock. I don't want to have to work a job. And yeah, you know, it's the, like, oh... There was, there was so many things like that and I kind of let them fly because I can't even remember what it was. There was something else I listened to recently. Oh, yeah. Crossroad that, Revival, is it they're called? Fuck me, I'm not even going there. Yeah. No, it was something Jesus. else. It was a song I was asked to listen to and I looked up the lyrics first and the lyrics were really, really corny but when I heard the song, despite the fact the lyrics were shit... They were delivered well. Yeah. And I thought, well, that song that I'm saying is like a kind of a rock and roll tip. Um, I, I started picking up on some corny lyrics that I thought were bad, but because they were delivered okay, I let it I let it slide. I wasn't gonna pick up I wasn't gonna hold it. I mean I love Lionheart and my god their lyrics are cringy, so I'm not gonna judge any other band. Okay, for well it says plenty about me because I just love their lyrics. Oh no, no, I mean they're I mean getting um, completely off track, but, but as I say, first track, straight up rock and roll next track I listened to to me sounded a bit like uh, Velvet Revolver yeah. which is the band that Scott Weiland and Slash used to be on together I think it was another member Duff of McKagan Duff was and, in that band as well uh, the drummer oh Christ what was his name just we don't know the drummer no idea also drummed in the cult Matt Sorum okay yes. um, hell of a drummer so that was fine okay you know you, your band doesn't have to have one exact sound so moving on um, the next thing started to sound a bit like to me, Blaze Bailey era Iron Maiden, but then the vocals had like a hint of Eddie Vedder. Was yeah. that on you the know second kind of, EP? Yeah. Um, uh, I think it was off fra- in, Fractures. It was off Fractures. Uh, in, right? uh, there's just like the second song, or the first song of the second EP, In Too Deep. It reminded me of that horrible band Stiltskin from back in the 90s. They had a Levi's advert and uh, 
It's one of those songs, if you heard it, you'd know it. Okay. Uh, that was, yeah, they were not good. But, but at this stage, I'm thinking to myself, okay, these three songs are probably off different EPs from different times, and maybe they're going through lineup changes or they're listening to different types of music and that's coming through in the music. So I'm kind of like, at this stage, I'm kind of far enough. But then the next song I listen to after listening to the Blazeberry style, Blazeberry Maiden style song, the next one sounded like Shine Down. And I noticed it's off the same EP, it's off the Fractures EP. And then the one after that I thought sounded, it started off like really funky. Like yeah. the first thing that came to my mind was um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. But then the song took a turn and it started to sound like Alice in Chains. And at that point, I'm just like, I'm lost. I have no idea what's going on here. I don't, I don't think any band has to <clears throat> slot themselves into yeah. the genre and say, we just play that, we sound like that, and that's all we do. But if you're constantly firing off in different directions, I think you'll lose people. Yeah. You lost me. And that, that was my... I think that is, that's the thing that stuck with me about False Solution, was the inconsistency in sound. Yeah. It sounded like listening to a compilation. It was confusing. Sounded like listening to a CD with ten different bands on it, and so how do you decide whether you like it if it's yeah. just constantly changing? Well, I got a, like an early Def Leppard vibe, like from the, the, the off that first EP, it sounded like uh, on through the night, high and dry, era Def Leppard, that sort of kind of rock and roll kind of vibe. Oh, off the first song, the one that I said was um, rock and roll. Basically, aye, basically aye, with the, first, the, yeah. the video where they're all sitting in the bar and stuff. Well, I didn't watch the video. I just listened okay. to them on on Bandcamp, whatever. Um, the second song on that first EP, the opening riff is it's almost identical to Say It In So By Weezer. Yeah, it's okay. Cocaine right. or something. Was that the name of the song? Uh, or? Yeah, and it, yeah, it just as soon as I heard it, it's like, yeah, that's that's Weezer Say It In So. Yeah. So that kind of, they're like once again they're another band that, if they played Bloodstock, you know they'd be. They'd, em- they'd either empty the tent or be ripped apart. I, c- I can't say I've done all of Bloodstock, personally. No. What, what did you reckon to it? Um, I was listening to the second album. I gave it a couple of run-throughs in the bus uh, the other day. And I I kind of liked it. I was digging it. It's not... It isn't Bloodstocky, really. Yeah. But I think the way you're saying, like, the changes, like, the way the music changes, what was very jarring was after listening to the EP and then it looped back to the first track... How that EP ends and how that EP starts. Yeah. The three tracks kind of progress when you're listening to them in order, but when it jumps back, it's just like, oh wait, hang on, what 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 just happened? Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like yeah, whiplash. It's, it sounds like it's maybe from back. over a, a period of years. Those songs, and I think his voice on the because the EP and then is it an album or, or no? I think it's a longer, just a longer EP. Yeah. Um, his voice on the second one's a lot different. It's a lot more aggressive. Mm. I think he's putting more sort of snarl or whatever into it and. I actually thought at one point it could be a different singer. You see this, I think that's what, the if they come down and I've seen bands do that before who maybe are a bit rockier and then they come down and they're like, no, right, this is a metal competition. And right, they, they do, heavy it up. they heavy it up and they do make things a bit heavier and maybe drop things down a wee bit and the vocals get a bit angrier and a bit grier. Yeah. If, the, I don't know if they can do that. If they do, I think, I, I th- I, I'm curious, I think they could pull it off. I think, I think you're right, actually. Um, I hadn't really mm-hmm. thought about that. The fact that they've got so many different types of songs and stuff means that if they go into a Bloodstock competition, they could go, let's pick our six heaviest songs. Yeah. And if they went for um, something I'm going to mention later, which is the Bordy Takeover, um, if they went for something like that, they could go, let's pick out our six rockiest songs yeah. Yeah. and go with that. So there's, I guess there's a benefit to being so, I say it inconsistent, someone else might say dynamic. Um but having all those different styles in there, maybe there's a benefit to that. But then the, the, the problem with that is, you know, if you're that sort of scattergun with how you, you know, with your songs and stuff, people then can't, if they can't get, uh, there's not a consistent theme, you know, you, you listen to a band or you listen to an album, you, you don't want to be t- bouncing off so many different walls. I, I've said it before, where a, a, a band will put an album out, right? And I'll go, a good example is our recent Marlon Manson album. Um, the album came out and I listened to it and I thought that's a good album but that's not what I want from Marlon Manson yeah. and sometimes that preconception of what a band is can yeah. can shift your, your, your opinion on that album 
And the thing is, if you can get into the but mindset, if you go back to that album, you know what to expect the second time around. So true, you can you can alter your perception of it a wee bit, and you go right. This is I'm, I'm in the mood to actually listen to this and give yeah. this a chance. Whereas if a band comes out and plays, you know, like I said, one minute they're you know early Def Leppard, the next minute they're Shine Down, the Just next minute they're Red Hot Chili Peppers. You, you you can't settle and you know you just don't I think get a still... proper listen to it just out of curiosity where did you listen to them on? Uh, it's a band camp I think you listen to band camp what did you listen on? Spotify I listened on YouTube right that's how you do it get your music everywhere yes, yes. there's a bunch of bands I've been looking at here and you try and find their music and they're sitting in a wee corner of the internet um Big tick in the box for false solution. They've got the music everywhere. Yeah, you need to do that. Yeah, Push right. your music. Right. Um, they're promoting the the. You go on to their page and the gigs are there. They're highlighting it. And yeah, yeah. Which brings us on to the next band I want to talk about, um, which is Monroe. I'd like to talk about Monroe for a little bit. Um, Monroe is a band who is fronted by a guy called Jake Monroe. Jake is a, or was a daily vlogger on YouTube and does a few other things like streaming video games and whatnot. Um, he's put together this band and for a while it was a one man project um, where he was programming a lot of stuff on uh, his computer and then uh, playing, I think he plays like 8 string guitar or something, um, does vocals as well. It's kind of genty sort of stuff. Yeah. The band's... A, one way I'll put it, if Tesseract, Periphery or Architects ever came to Belfast, personally I think Monroe are the band to support, without a doubt. Um, they have an album called Monochromatic. Mon no, it's not. It's Monochromantic. So it's like monochrome crossed with romantic. I thought that was actually quite special. <laughs> I, like, I like the title um, of the album. I think that album, there's a newer EP that I haven't, I've only dipped into, but yeah. that album I think is absolutely brilliant and I've seen them live before and went yeah they're alright but I listened to that album and I think it's absolutely brilliant I don't think they have got the experience to bring their music to the stage like yet um, I don't think they can do it with three people no um, if you're, the if you're sound is too big if you're playing that kind of technical sort of music yeah. um, although and possibly in their favour on that the EP is not as for me it wasn't as more stripped back technical it was a bit uh, cleaner a bit more a bit easier I think um, um, it sort of reminds me of the kind of because I thought there's a wee bit of like a modern Opeth vibe uh, to, to, the, to the best of my knowledge um, Jake's been playing guitar for years and he's been putting music together for a long time I know that album came out 2016 but at least according to their Facebook page, I think they've only played about three gigs. Yeah. Two in Belfast. One in Dublin. One in Dublin. Um, and one of the Belfast ones was last year's Metal to the Masses, and then the other one was a, actually a very good gig with uh, Words of Bird and Cursed Song, mm -hmm. because if you put those two bands on a bill, it's going to be a good gig. Um, there's a lot to be said about their music, but I think one of the things about this band that gets to me is... Jake's went off on one on Twitter about being fucked over by promoters, about not being get, able to get gigs, about <clears> um, <throat> sound men um, sabotaging their sound to make them sound crap. Um, oh. I can't even remember what else. If you go on their Facebook page, there isn't a single mention of Metal to the Masses. They are not putting themselves across in a very positive light yeah. whatsoever. If you're going to slobber about sound men and uh -huh. promoters, then sound men and promoters are going to, they're just going to the, the, avoid you. The thing about that one that, that twisted my melon was if a sound guy sabotages a band and makes them sound shit, that is going to reflect really badly on the sound guy. And yeah. then the promoter's going to go, you made the sound sound shit, maybe you won't get gigs anymore. So yeah. why would a sound guy do that? Yeah. That fucking throws me. The yeah. fact that coming off with all those criticisms and all those complaints about the music industry when... And, the people and you can get in contact me and correct me if I'm wrong. When you've played three gigs, I mean... Yeah, I'd say it's bullshit. And the thing is, it does annoy me, like, going on, and they have... If it wasn't for the fact that James has said they're playing, you would know nothing. They haven't updated their Facebook from about mm -hmm. September. Now, also, that goes to Surf Green as well. I had a look. They don't seem to mention it. 
but mm-hmm. they're they've a really slick looking website that hasn't yeah. been updated from about August. The new EP is not on there. It, well, there's it's a link. I think there's, there's a link. Yeah, there is. It is because there's a link. That's oh, how right. I got to. Uh, that's how I got. To, there's a link to Spotify, but it only plays a bit. I, I, listen, it down I listened to the album on Bandcamp, and I assumed, and then there was there was the album. Sorry, that's and, what it was. There was the album and an old EP, and I assumed that's everything. But Claire then told me no, the veneer EP. I was kind of like, well, yeah. why is it not on Bandcamp yeah. again? You got to get all your ducks in a row if you're gonna promote and push yeah. your band. Now I know that one of the things he whenever he went on that Twitter rant. Um, he said he's going to start pushing himself musically so maybe we're being a wee bit overly harsh and the music thing's just kind of been like a bit of a side project and something he does for a bit of fun and maybe now's the time where he was going to kind of well I don't think we are being overly harsh if somebody puts something up you know online like that Uh then you know that is the face they're putting out to the world this whole thing I never got this whole thing about promoters blah 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 voodoo I think last time I checked it's 150 quid to rent the room yourself you know, and if you, you know, speak to them, you just email them, phone them, walk in, just go, right, we want to book this room, what dates do you have free? Why do you need promoters? You can't put posters up in Belfast, you can't hand flyers out, it's all done online these days, so you can do that yourself. People that say, oh, promoters aren't getting us gigs, put your own fucking gig on. And the, the thing I've said a hundred fucking times, if you want to be given gigs, go to gigs. Yeah. Yes. I, I guarantee, yes. say if you're in a shit band, right? And you're going down to a certain promoters, and that's it when you're over a shit band. Yeah. I'm just giving an example. If you're in a really bad band, right? Because there's bands, there's bad bands out there getting gigs. Yeah. And you're down at a certain venue regularly. Once a month, twice a month, right? And you kind of you walk past, you know the James and Rory say, Hi, James, how's things? Not too bad. Good gig. Yeah. Right? Or other bands that play. Yeah. Talk to the bands. See in about three months' time, see if you go in and go, I've started a band and we're looking. We think we're ready for our first gig. I promise you, you'll get offered a gig. That's yeah. how you got it. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're supporting the promoters, then the promoters will support your yes. band. If you're never out of gigs, if you only go out when your band's playing, I don't know how. How do you network? How do you get to yeah. know people? How do you expect <clears throat> anything to be offered to you? Exactly. Um, yeah, that's the, it's, it's, again, this, is, this is a whole topic we can yeah. we will rant about it's, at some it, point. it frustrates me when you see that yes. approach and thank god because I would have went off on another one if a fucking click had have been used I think <laughs> don't you mean click <sighs> yeah, click yeah, fuck, I think uh, what, you, <laughs> what you were saying though um, earlier um, it's the same uh, like with winterness there is a great big hole in the Belfast scene that Monroe could slide right into. Yeah, no, there's nobody right. really I doing that the, whole gentle so, technical thing. And you know what? That album was... I Because the only experience I'd had with them before, I haven't seen them, but I heard you editing a video of live footage, uh-huh. and it wasn't great. No. I, and so whenever I was listening to the album, I was like, how is this the same band? There was the one track there from where I'm standing was just... Stunning. Yes, it was absolutely brilliant. stunning. Absolutely brilliant. Oh. But it's so com- I mean, it's so complicated and so complex music, and you can tell Jake has put a hell of a lot of work into this. Absolutely, there's no denying that. There's no and denying it's effort. I just I would love for them the live show to reflect that sound. It's I think like sometimes whenever we're checking out bands prior to re- previewing them for this, I will like a band or I'll not like a band. There's few bands I come across where. I'm not already familiar with them, mm-hmm. and I like them enough to download the album and add it to my music collection. About three tracks into that Monroe album, I was straight to iTunes and I got that album downloaded. So we're not hating on Monroe or anything like that because I fucking love that album and I will I will genuinely listen to that. That's gonna go through. That's gonna be on in my car a lot in the next couple of weeks. It's just it's just the approach that kind of it triggered me. It feels like they're self sabotaging. And I know, yes. like, because I know from that gig at Cursed Sun, the the reviews weren't kind to them. And I know Jake took that really yes. to heart. Yep, that happened. And he obviously cares, he gives a shit, and he has the talent. But, I mean, the fact is, it's a battle of the bands. If you haven't even told your fans you're playing, how yeah. are you going to get any crowd vote? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, to and me, it... they just, if he said on Twitter he really wants to concentrate on the metal and stuff, and I hope he does. I mean, the thing that I think that irks me is, this is a man that at conventions does talks on how to do social media, 
and how to promote yourself and stuff. And then does nothing. And then and he, he's very good at that with his YouTube and his Twitch and all that stuff. And if he applied just a little bit of that, I, I, is he embarrassed or something? I, I, I don't know. If he applied that to the band. The, the, the other thing, and again, this isn't necessarily honing in on Monroe. This is honing in on any band yeah. that's doing this. If you're in a band competition, something as vast as, as Metal to the Masses, surely you want to know who you're up against. Yeah. I mean, if I was in Heat 6, I'd be trying to get down to as many of the Heats previously. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Kedos and, and Cursed Son. And Kedos are doing it. Going. Cursed Son are doing it. Oracle are doing it. They're getting down and they're checking yeah. out the other bands. Not only are they just... I mean, maybe not everybody in the band, but there'll be, there'll be, there'll be one someone, or two people and, at least. And I don't mean they're, com- they're not just coming down and checking out the bands. They're not standing there going, hmm, there's my enemy. I must know his weakness. Yeah. Uh, they're coming down and enjoying the gigs. They're probably doing that as well. Though. But here's the, here's, here's the thing. Like, Curse and Son give them a gig and stuff before. And maybe this comes across as fake or something, but you, you've seen other bands doing it going, oh, our mates in such and such are playing you know, yeah. tonight. You know, it's just something simple like Facebook that. Facebook things go here. Our mates and Cursed Son are in this. Hey, you know, good luck to them. Yeah. Because then guess what? Chances are Cursed Son will be like here. Our mates and Monroe are playing this, yeah. and it's out you scratch, and that's what we're talking about. You build the contacts and stuff. I, think I have to say I wasn't a fan of Monroe at all. Wasn't you? You didn't dig it. Wasn't my bag. Um, there's a decent voice there, definitely. Um, but to me it was. And there's talent there, but I, I listened to that album and my head was off doing other things. Mm. At no point was I reined in or grabbed. Even if there's a, you know, even if you're listening to something terrible, which we've had to do, you're sitting listening to it. Going, oh my God, what, you know, what are you doing? This is awful. But I listened to that album and it, and you know, the EP, and at no point was I taken by it. It just didn't, yeah. didn't grab me. It reminded me, like I said, of Opeth. I hadn't listened to Opeth and my brother got on at me and the first three albums blew me away. I said, I even said to him, okay. I said to him, this band is now in my top ten. See, after the third album, they shit the bed for me. It right. just became bland and awful. See, to me, Opeth are a five out of ten band. Right? And when I come to like marks out of ten, to me, five is music that you don't like and you don't dislike. It merely exists and that's what Opeth is to me. It's just that it's, it's music you can put on. To me. Music you can put on and forget that it's there. And to a degree, I think you kind of made this point. Music like that is almost worse than music you don't like. Yeah. Because you can you can poke at music you don't like. Yeah. And but but at some, least it's some, some, re- a reaction. Yeah. You know. If music um, just kind of sits there and exists, you're kind of like. Yeah. It, it, yeah. If it's beige, right. then. You'd rather listen to Coldplay because at least you can go. Oh, no, Coldplay is the definition of that to me. Oh no no Coldplay! No no no! no, no, no. I place. stick if somebody sticks Coldplay on. I'm like I'm Even gonna ring. gouge your fucking eyes out. <laughs> you know, no. Right, I think we've made our points there. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think we'll we, several. We, we didn't necessarily. I didn't necessarily mean to go in too heavy on Monroe. It's just that certain things that they have said or yeah. done has triggered reactions, and those things apply to all the bands that are that are doing those same things. I really um, hope they come down and they can sound as good as their album. Yep. Because they'll walk if the they heat. Can, yeah, if they can do that, they'll walk the heat. If they can't pull that off, uh-huh. then yeah, this, this is going to be. They're nervous on stage. And, yeah, they I just mean, have to get up there and own it. As much as I don't really like what they did, listening to everyone else, they you know they have to be strong contenders to get through. My last thing I'll say about Monroe is if I was in Monroe, I would want to play live as much yes. as I possibly can. Because I think, as I say, the album's brilliant, I've seen them live. It doesn't stack up to what they're putting out on record, but I think that's purely down to how much experience they've had on stage. Yeah. Um, so that that would be my one. If you're watching this, that'd be one of my pe- my one piece of advice is play live yeah. as much as you can. Um, you're probably sitting there going, "Well, my band's better than your podcast," but like whatever. Probably <laughs> <laughs> um, true. Moving on, the next band is a band called Surf Green. Um, they're a pop mm-hmm. punk band, and quite frankly, you could be the best pop punk band on the planet, and I'd still want to vomit. So there's not really yeah. much for me to say here. Yeah, they're not a bloodstock band. Um, they're kind of that alternative indie pop punk thing, and mm-hmm. you know, to me, pop punk can be great. Yeah, like you listen like Green Day and Offspring. Uh, you know, they're pop punk. You know, that's to me is the the sort of <laughs> that, you know, where you go with that? Harvester. 
<laughs> you know. Um, but these guys, I don't know, there's one song, uh, Depresso Espresso. <laughs> yeah, the title alone Brilliant is fucking them. terrible. Brilliant them for song. Um, but the chorus is just a rip off of the Ramones, We're a Happy Family. Okay. You know, and it's like, it's just slowed down. Um, I quite enjoyed the song, uh, Craven War. It's like the video with the alien and stuff. The video's class. And I mean, it's, it's very cool. Weezer. Yeah. You mentioned Weezer earlier, but I got... There's definitely Weezer vibes There's some 41 in there, and yeah. there's Weezer in there, and... It was all right. At but what it's they not, do, they're really they're, good. They are good at what they're they do. They're really good at what they do. You can't you, know, you can't deny that. See, but there's a song that I heard, uh, listen to, I think it was on Bandcamp, um, Can't Stand, it's called. Uh-huh. And I would love to see them play that because they will get lynched. Why is that? Because it's fucking awful. Jesus. Um, it's really slow and just, oh, if, you know, if they, no, just the, terrible. One, one thing I will say, now, it's, it's pop punk and I just, I can't go there. I just can't. But if you go through their YouTube channel and watch their videos from the oldest to the newest, yeah. you can see growth there yeah. without any shadow of a doubt. They're a band that looked very, very amateur just a short while ago. I and think they're, they're quite young. They, they, I mean, they are very, very, very young. Um, young. They won, I think, the Pavilion Battle of the Bands. Yeah. Right. Recently, or yeah, maybe yeah, last right. last year. For fuck. So um, yeah, they're they're. they're uh, like I said, at what they do, they are yeah. really good. This is just this is the wrong competition for them again. Um, mm-hmm. Like I lost interest really quickly listening to them because it just it's not even in, interesting pop punk to me. But so especially in re- relation to this competition, it's again they're a band that shouldn't shouldn't be in it. You know, um, I can. Possibly see I've, them maybe getting through because I reckon live they'll put on a hell of a show and yeah. you know they'll, they'll bring the energy and yeah, people will enjoy I it. I think they'll bring a crowd. I don't think they'll fuck up in any way. They'll be very professional. The, the footage I watched of them um, was in a the, the, first of all it seemed to be like in a bedroom or a, a basic practice room or whatever, and it just it looked like young guys who had been playing instruments for three or four months yeah. picked it up pretty quick, but were you know having a bit of fun and then I went from that to another video that we're playing I think it was one of the band competitions that you mentioned <clears throat> and it was slick as fuck yeah you know well, as, although, or as far as I'm concerned as slick as pop punk can be although you're saying they're going to bring a crowd but again like Monroe whenever I went onto their Facebook page they've not mentioned they're in this well, competition that, yeah. we're a week away and I mean they were heavily promoting the other pavilion stuff and loads of other gigs so yeah, I mean they, they know really how to promote were. So maybe they... I they don't, don't know. give a fuck. They, Which then once again gets into the whole thing of get the fuck out of my house if you're doing that. It's... Why haven't they promoted it? It's... Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I know Facebook's not the like be all and end all and it's not a magic solution. But in Belfast but it is. just one post going here, we're playing on but this. But in Belfast you can't put up posters yeah. now. Where yeah. you, know, you can't fly... You can't hand out flyers. There's no other way to properly promote your band other than online. And Facebook is how you do that now. You know? maybe, maybe they'll hit it really hard this week. You know, because yeah. maybe they are younger and they their fans actually, are younger, and, and so they, they can, can do stuff on a week's notice. Older <laughs> yeah. fans, worth older fans who have to get babysitters and work and all that yeah. stuff N- need advance notice. Maybe they can get away without it, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Last band on the bill then is a band called As uh, Cities Neil. Um, they are from Ported Down Direction, I think. They have 45 um, likes on Facebook. They only have 45 likes on Facebook. Um, oh, I think they're a band who are in very, the, very, the very early stages of development. Um, run through their Facebook posts, you can see that they've had a bit of difficulty getting a full lineup. Um, there are no studio recorded songs for us to listen to. Um, one of the guys did <coughs> actually contact them, one of the guys sent me. Um, I practice room recording but uh, it was just a wee bit too late and I didn't get a chance to listen to that so literally all we have to judge them off is uh, a couple of the three videos up on their Facebook page which appear to be was from Fajos a yes. year ago and it looks like it's CCTV footage yeah. unless they've stuck yeah. a, you know they've stuck a, a shitty phone up in the corner somewhere and the sound quality is awful they and just even just everything about it is so the the only in fact I don't even I don't even want to say anything about it I don't think there's enough there for me no. to well, judge off to um, me I think there is because if that's what you're putting up 
then that is your outward face to the I don't world. Think that is that, what you're saying. Mm, this is us. Look I don't think what that's what they want. I think they would love to have other stuff. They just don't. Then have don't it put yet. it up. You know, it's you know, this but is there's there's an there's, argument a, there's for a thing it. to be said about you know, some you know nothing is better than something shit. Yeah, and we we if I ever start another band, I'm gonna I know I'm gonna approach it in a certain way, and the best example I can give is how Stranglewire launched themselves and we keep using certain bands as examples of how to be fucking awesome basically <laughs> whenever strangle wire put their facebook page up it was like here we are we're strangle wire here's our video here's our ep yes. and we're playing voodoo on this date and it was like we are fucking here we have landed right yeah. well, I think and to me that that's the way, way to do it. It. there's so many guys that sit together on a Saturday night, having a few beers, going, do you want to start a band? I why not? Okay, make a Facebook page, and it's like, no, but I mean that's it. That's that. that comes from experience, you know. That, that's true. The crawling and strangle wire, like they've all been Maybe. round in bands for a long time. I think they've been playing for about fifty years now. Yeah, close to that. Yeah. Well, so I, th- I mean, not- you you're gonna make mistakes. Like you said yourself, there. You know, if you did a band, you did this way this time. Yeah. And yeah, that's true. I mean, I do. I mean, I do. Is this their first band or I? I don't know. I, from the, the the look of the video, some of them look fairly old, but then it's a shit video. I, so I you can't, couldn't. See you can't really yeah. see. It looks they, they look like they could be in it's, their late twenties, early thirties, maybe a bit more. It's one of the things. Um, if, if you run a competition like this prior to Facebook and the internet and all existing, right, yeah, you just have to wait till you got yeah. there, yeah, and then judge the band solely on that performance but that's not the so world we live in anymore it is it absolutely isn't yeah. but to me that's for this band anyway that's kind of what you're going to have to do yeah it's yeah. I think as well like they're musically they're heavy enough I think of all the bands on this uh, in this heat they're probably the sort of most kind of metal um, that most suited but and they have a decent sense of melody with some of their stuff but it's by the numbers, you know. There's nothing there that really grabs you and shakes you. And that footage of them playing live, they're just all standing there. I know Fad Joe's from what I can oh, see so there. I was just it, about to say that. There's not a lot of room. No. But <laughs> we've all been we've all been to small venues with no room where bands have gone absolutely or, nuts. I'll tell you the best example of that is we went down to Fad Joe's and we seen Hemlock play, a band from Las Vegas. And see that wee tiny, everyone struggled. Cursed Sun struggled with it. Uh, Perry Apt struggled with it. Hemlock seemed to take this tiny wee amount of space, right? And turn it into a fucking <coughs> festival stage. The yeah. way they bounced, the way they moved. It just, it, it logically didn't make sense. It was like looking at a, what do, you, what do you call the artist that does the stairs that are all going all over the place? Oh, yes, I know the guy. <laughs> I can't remember his name. We'll look yeah. it up and stick it below. Yeah. Um, it was like looking at one of those. It's going. There isn't room for those guys to do what I am watching them do. But right you know what that is? Them. That is a band that does that in their practice room. Experience. That whenever they play yeah. in their practice room, they are still giving it stacks. Like we've all been in bands and everybody practicing, and you, you you don't really give it the same as you would on stage. Mm-hmm. If you can then go into a wee small room like that and you're still bouncing up and everybody knows where everyone is, that's a band that actually works on that when they're. They're actually yeah. either, either they work on it or it's just a natural thing. Once they play, they just get sucked in and they just go yeah. for it. I do think it's slightly unfair to be comparing a band that's been around for a year with Hemlock, who've been on the go for twenty five mm-hmm. years, who have toured <laughs> with Slipknot and Lamb yeah. of God, who have uh, played arenas, yeah. and maybe awesome their life. careers not where it used to be. You're you're, a, you're absolutely yeah. right. That that is a fair point. I'm just making the point that you can use. Yeah, be more the thing is, they um, yeah they just they just stood there. There was nothing really memorable. The no stage present and yeah. a thing that really stuck out for me. Um, one of the videos, one of the songs is called Jealousy, and they spelt it wrong. They missed out the a in it, and yeah, that that's <laughs> just. It may be a little bit grammar Nazi of me, but if you can't even you spell a simple word like jealousy right. You know, and you can't even go back in because that video's been up for how long now? I, I'm reluctant to judge them based on yeah. what I've seen. Now, the problem is, um, we've talked about all four bands that are playing Heat 6. The problem is, we're in a competition where we are paying in to judge the bands. Well, well you did that the day, that's the true. performance. Yeah, that's true. Well, um, unfortunately, Heat 6 is the only Metal to the Masses gig that I can't make. No. And you can't make it either because we're going to Southport for a weekend to spend... 
four days raving to the likes of Lenny D, Two Unlimited, for some fucking reason, Napalm Death are playing. Um, it's going to be an amazing weekend, but we're going to die. I'd possibly. be very surprised if anyone watching this has any interest whatsoever. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, going to die that weekend as well for a completely different reason because I'm going to be the only one going to this absolutely abysmal the, fucking the, the next podcast, hopefully, we could rope someone in. Um, I'll be on yeah. as always because I've got to keep these guys in a leash. Yeah, and um, really, really, it's it could just be it might just be you talking about it. 45 minutes of me banging my head on the table because be I am, positive. I'm not going to but you know what the four of them could blow you away they could you could and come we, here and be we, talking we, about we, how it's you know, the best taste or they could just blow you <laughs> that might help you know, that, that, would, that would definitely be interesting um, but yeah this even looking at it um, this is for my money the worst okay. team of the whole lot you yeah. know it's there's nothing there's absolutely nothing here in any of these bands that makes me think there's potential. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that I'm missing Monroe. I, I've just seen. I, I've just got a vested interest in that band for some, for reasons I can't really pinpoint. Clara, who do you think's going three? I honestly don't know. I think it's gonna come down to who brings a crowd. Okay. I think. Okay. Go. I I would suggest. <laughs> I think I would like Monroe to get through because they are without a doubt the most metal of the bands, and it is a metal competition, and. Yeah, as you said, I would just love to see them do well. I worry about them, but I hope they go through. Uh, maybe false solution. False solution. Yeah. I think it's going to be Monroe um, and as City's Neil. Because, yeah, no, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't expect that. <laughs> don't ask me who I want to go through because I don't want any of them to go through. Um, you're, but a lo- you're a lovely man. Here, it's just lovely like man. I said, I've, I've got nothing out of this heat at all right. um, as City's Neil are the most sort of metal sounding right. for me um, so I think it's it's going to be those two but it's, it is going to come down to who brings a crowd I don't know how the judges are going to are going to see because to be honest we don't know who the judges are going to be but um, yeah it's whoever gets through out of this is being destroyed in the semi-final Depending on how well, no, yeah, you're there's probably no, right. no you're probably right. No, uh, the two that I think will go through, I think Monroe will go through because they are, from what I've seen and from what I've listened to, they are technically the best musicians in this yeah. round. Oh, I don't think there's they're even technically some of the best musicians in the whole competition. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Monroe will go through. I would be very surprised if they didn't. They would need to shit the bed on the day to not go through. The second band that I am going to think are going through, I think Surf Green are going to go through. So we've I covered think, every band. I think, <laughs> I think Surf Green you will think come the going to do it for them? I think they will entertain. And I think they'll go through on that basis. I think they'll come down. They'll have a blast. And as I say, see that thing about if you're having fun? Yeah. Then the crowd has fun and it just perks people up. And Except makes... that, you know, Mark Ashby, one of the judges, I've spoken to him at length about this many times. He looks at a band and judges them for Bloodstock. You know, that is his, because it's for Bloodstock. Well, you he keep... Looks, he looks... He's told me this many times. If courtesans can play Bloodstock... Well, yeah, that so is very true. Surf Green can play Bloodstock. Yes. And we've talked about it before, or Bloodstock. Oh, no, no. They no, have... No, I'm not actually... Not, not actually by that, because... Courtesans have a certain kind of darkness about them. Like you could put Skunk and Nancy I'm, I'm, at Bloodstock. I'm going to look at them. I'm, I'm going to see if a pop punk band's ever played Bloodstock. Good luck with that. <laughs> so we're normally uh, dedicated to the Metal to the Masses thing, but there's a couple of other things we'd like to cover this evening uh, just before we wrap things up. Uh, last night was the Donham Die album launch. Yes. What do you reckon? Hell of a night. All bands were pretty much firing last night. Like, um, few wee issues with you know Don and Day. They'll even admit it themselves. You've been away for so long and stuff. But I thought they, you know, it was just from start to finish. It was a great night. You know, first time seeing Strangle Wire. Um, Is that your first time? Yeah. Um, they grew on me. I did. You know, at, at at start it was wasn't really again it's too much of the grind kind of element for me mm-hmm. but as it went on it was i think the music kind of kind of managed to carry me through and pete is it the singer yes yes pete Clark. 
you know that guy that guy knows how to work a stage and how it like does you know, he's, does you could you could easily see that kind of performance on a tour there, there's a real genuineness about how he uh, yeah I, there's no moving. like there's not like oh come on Belfast now sometimes yeah. I can feel forced from a Belfast band it felt really natural he sounds like he's pissed off at his mate for not putting dinner on yeah. or something <laughs> he put a fucking dinner on hurry up get up come on yeah. hungry the range <laughs> the range in his vocals is I mean, because he goes from the growly to the... Like, and that's the one thing that sort of, you know, kind of... I, I, I would prefer a bit more light and shade with it. I'm, like, I'm not a fan of just a... Yeah, I think there's plenty of that in there. Um, it, was, it was a bit too much for me, but um, like I said, I, could, I reckon if I see them more, listen to them more... That, I, could, that I was going to say that. Because there's, there, there's enough there that's kind of hooked me and was like... Okay. One, one, one of my problems with um, Death Metal is that if you don't know the songs, to me, it's... It's harder to latch on to, yeah. um, so I need, that'll be the first thing that I need to get some strangle wire tunes. Uh, what do you remember the gig? Um, brilliant, I loved that. Yeah. Um, not fussed on the Empire. I don't think it's good the for Empire local. Can fuck off! Yes. Yes. Gigs, it was frankly. it was the wrong venue. That should have been in Voodoo. Because I, I do think yeah. I think there was a decent crowd, but the problem is in the Empire, unless it's sold out, it just looks yeah. squashed. It or at least at least if you can, if you have to in the, the Empire, you have to fill the ground floor there. Yeah. The dance floor. Yeah. If you're not filling that, then it looks a wee bit kind of. Ruby, but there were people up dancing, uh, well, dancing, <laughs> uh, throwing themselves about and you know, generally being ganches and stuff. So yeah. I think the boys were happy enough. With it's, I, I, thought, I thought no great loss were class because I just love those guys that do not take themselves <laughs> seriously. It is just yeah. fun, silly, slammy, hardcore, and I can't get enough of them. <laughs> um, Kidos were. Were Kidos? Were Kidos, yeah. but, I think they suffered but, slightly sound wise. I think the it's sound all was, a bit more. The sound. I think all the bands did. Yeah, the sound like, yeah. was very fucking ropey yeah. in there. The apparently. sound was. See if you went down the back, the sound was fine down the back. They've got a new. The speakers so They've high. got a new PA in. But it's well. way up there. Yeah. No one's up there. Like, I see when I, stood, that when I was stood down at the front, <laughs> oh. you're, you're just getting a lot of kind of. You're just getting busy at the stage amps. Yeah. And, so you know, modelled. It's pish. Yeah, it's it just. It okay. should have been Voodoo. Stop and I, putting metal gigs on the album. I understand that Voodoo was obviously booked and stuff and the boys wanted to get the album out. Uh-huh. Um, they probably should have waited, but then the problem is, as we noted, you know, there there was a definite element of ring rust with them. They haven't played live in so long and that kind of came across. No, one, of the, one of the things I found with Don and Die last night is overall I think the, the new material came across very well. Yeah. I thought they played really well. But see when they hit that stage, they hit that stage with such energy and like such they always do. force, right? That by halfway through the set, some members of the band were busted. Yeah. And it started off it started off up here and as the set went on, it slowly came down and by the end of it the, the, well, there was just there was nothing left in the tank. I was so. speaking to speaking to I've been speaking to Thomas and he's genuinely had a cold on for the last week or so oh. which he's been trying to shake he's not said anything then on because you know it's like, you know, it's, like a, it's like a fighter whenever they you know they sure, come out and sure. lose a fight they, they don't want to say that you know uh, they, you know they don't say they were injured before the lead up yeah. you know he's he's been struggling he's been trying to shake it um i think it was like we've seen them so many times and they've come out with that energy before and they've kept it going the whole time and sometimes they've actually just you know got more energetic yeah, yeah. they've been away for so long they're they're I, not I think, you know, they're not used to playing I think they were excited oh yeah oh Jesus they were yeah. excited this was their big gig it was meant to be last week it was still great they had another week and I was I'm sure they were just fucking busted I think, I think that postponement kind of rattled them as well <sighs> yeah it, it would have, I reckon it would have been a different game altogether if it had gone on I'm, on the Thursday I'm not saying it wasn't good oh no they were good. yeah they were great very very good I think I, th- I think a scene a certain element of them winning over new fans last night with yeah. the new style of music and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it was it was it was a good gig. I want to see them again because mm. I think I well, think I think that was a big deal to them. That was yeah. like a big fucking oh, let's do the fucking EP la- or the album launch. Now I just want to see them do a gig. Yeah, and, and yeah. It didn't there. help as well. Stu's wireless pack. Uh-huh. It was, yeah, yeah, it was. There was picking up interference, and to me, if you have one of those did, and it does that, fuck it off and get a lead in. Did they play for an hour? Um, close to. I mean, an hour's a long. That's a yeah. long set. Yeah. And one of the gigs we go to, you, you bands 
don't normally play for that long. Yeah. So, you know, I yeah. guess that's another challenge in itself. Well, I think they've, they've got the material and we've seen, like I said, we've seen them before. We know they have that energy and that just, you know, oomph about them. But it was just, yeah, I think the expectation of the original gig being then postponed and it's kind of, you know, the, it rattled them a wee bit. Um, but they still... How many other bands would have crumbled? Yeah. You know, they I still came out and kicked the shit out of everybody. If it sounds like being, we're being really harsh. It's because we fucking love them so I much. Th- I think we're nitpicking like, fuck yeah. you. We're really putting this gig under a microscope and sort of looking at the, the bumps and the cracks. And the, it was a really good gig. It really yes. was. The new material is great. And they're definitely a band to watch. Yeah. They'll, uh, like I said, see them in six months from now. They'll, they will be shredding yep. venues. They'll just be leaving. The other thing I wanted to mention was a lot of these bands that we've talked about, we've talked about them all now because yeah. we're um, yeah, pre- previewed every uh, initial heat. There's lots of bands that we talk about there and we say they're not a download band. No, not you mean not a band. band. Oh, I'm such a dick sometimes. But we sometimes? <coughs> sometimes. All the time. Not a Bloodstock band. The <laughs> bands that we're like, you can't imagine them playing Bloodstock. They've got torn yeah. apart of Bloodstock. You've heard the comments we've made. There was a thing called Boardy Takeover where back whenever you had discussion boards instead of Facebook and Twitter and all that, they used to let the guys that chatted on the discussion board of the Download Festival website mm-hmm. pick bands to play on the Thursday night at Download before anything really happened. So it's basically people just run around the campsite having a drink and whatnot and then yeah. there's a tent set up in some bands. Go on to Facebook and look for Boardy Takeover. If you're a band that think... Uh, yeah, those guys are probably right. Maybe we're not a bloodstock band. Um, go to Bordy Takeover, get involved, yes. and try and get a set there. There has been bands from Belfast that have played there. Dream Awake. Dream Awake, I've played yeah. it. And I remember actually checking, you know, the, you go on the Facebook and see how many likes the band has? Yeah. And I kind of shot up by a good bit after oh, that. Yeah, the thing is, you, you they can't made, They made fans there. Yeah. They played in front of... It's a big tent. It's not like a wee small tent. There's You've nothing else no on. No competition. So nothing You've nothing else going on. So... And yeah, that's so, it. It's Because it's a Thursday night, it's in the village. Most people have turned up for camping at that yeah. point. They're getting absolutely fucking steaming. They want to do something. You know, it's a... You've got a captive audience there right in your hand and... Bands like, um, like I said, even, you know, Surf Green, uh, Rusty Taste of Sweetness, you know, all these bands, they they would go down at a shriek there, yep. you know, and but the, the other thing is, better, better option. Even if you do consider yourself a, a Bloodstock band, for want of a better phrase, still the reason why you can't go for that as well. Well, that's right. Like, you know, There's heavy bands play down though, yeah. so. You know, but yeah, definitely, definitely give that a, we'll, we'll put a link in the, uh, the comments. <laughs> Probably won't. Did I just steal your line? I always say I'm going to do that. Then you, you never do. Book a description. There's nothing there. Because you're amazing. Yeah, I slack her like. So I think that's us. We're going to wrap up. Yes. Um, we are going to head off now and see Oracle launch their EP. Yes. Um, if you're not at that gig, you're a ganch. Yep. Um, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> <laughs> chances are there's going to be a lot of ganches there as well. There's going to yeah, most people are ganches. To be yeah. fair. Um, yeah, uh, the next time you see us, we will have wrapped up all of the heats uh, and yep. we'll be starting to talk about the semi finals. I think that's where things get quite That's going to get tough. Honestly, yeah. I don't know how we're going to handle it in terms of the podcast because we're going to be talking about bands we've already talked about a lot to a degree. So I don't know if there's necessarily going to be a podcast per heat. We'll wait and see. Um, and I did say that after this, I was going to put together a little video. Um, just sort of uh, the state of the podcast where we see ourselves going in the future what our plans are um, and I'm going to put that little video probably sometime in the next week um, we've asked for a lot of feedback um, the one thing that we always do get in terms of feedback is that people love the honesty of it um, I think this episode's taken that to <laughs> degree um, thank you we appreciate that but we would we'd love to know when, whenever we move on from Metal to the Masses, what do you want to see in the show? Yeah. What do you want us to cover? How often would you like to see it? How long do you want the episode to be? All stuff like that. But I'll cover that in the next video. And I would really, really appreciate it if we got some feedback and comments and stuff whenever we do that. So for now, that's us. Um, we will wrap things up and say goodbye. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode. And as always, keep listening to the wrong kind of music. <laughs>